Welcome to another episode of Powered by Ancestry. As usual, I am your guide, Kwesi Kunadu. This episode's topic is ancestry and the proper burial. Many of you perhaps have not thought about the way you want to exit this human experience in this world, but I will argue that you should start thinking about this matter because this matter matters a whole lot regarding your completion of your human experience and essentially your life cycle and the consequence of incompleteness, not only for you, but for your family, your community, and the world of your ancestry. Let's start out with some basics. As some of you might have seen in the intro video to Power by Ancestry, I made reference to four categories of ancestry. Two categories are good. One is essentially a category of ancestors who have lived a you know, decent, respectful, good life. They are the ones whom one can call on during times of need, distress, through ritual libation and other means. The other is the evolved or matured ancestor, which means, yes, they lived a responsible, righteous life. More importantly, they have completed their purpose or mission in life. The third category and the fourth, they are similar. One is an ancestor whose mission or purpose in life was unfulfilled and unresolved. And so therefore, they stay close to the family community where they resided and interacted. They haven't gotten the message yet. They haven't gotten the memo that they're now no longer a part of this human community and they have moved on to the more immaterial ancestral world. They are indeterminate. They're not sure. And the fourth category, ancestry, they too do not make it to the world of ancestry yet. Indeed, they are ones who have lived a life that leads to the same end, which is violence. They lived a life of violence in some way, in some form, and they will usually exit this world in a way that is equally violent. These are the four categories of ancestry that we have. Now, to really understand these four categories and why they exist and why they're important as a way to understand ancestry, but also as how do we get to the proper burial, we have to back up a moment to the beginning. You see, my people have this cosmological understanding or story. It goes something like this. When I was conceived, on a day in June in the 1970s, my mother and father had done their part. In my mother's womb, from that moment of conception until I would exit, I was having a series of negotiations. By I, I don't mean my body, because that was still taking shape and form. I mean the spirit that would animate this body. It would have a conversation with the creative force of the universe. And this cosmic force would say to me, Kwesi, I want you to accomplish this when you have a human experience in your lifetime. And I would say, cool, creative force, I can do that. But then I would also say, well, creative force, I also have these things that I wanna do in my life. And a creative force would say in turn, cool, let's negotiate that. And so I leave my mother's womb with both a commanded purpose and destiny from the creative force, but also one that is personal, one that I ask for. In the most optimal scenarios, these two purposes and missions should be aligned. Sometimes they don't. And that leads to a life of confusion and the consequences that flow from confusion. And so once I'm born into this world and I'm sat on my backside, I take my first breath, you know, I begin to live life as a human, though of course, as a spirit encapsulated by a physical body, it is my parents and my community's task, it is their responsibility to ensure that A, I remember that mission and purpose, both personal and commanded by my creative force, but also their job is to safeguard it, is to nurture it so that I can achieve that particular mission and purpose. But as you know, in life, things happen. <laughs> we forget. We don't upkeep the rituals that our ancestors taught us. We don't abide by the values or guidelines or principles that they shared with us. We think we're too modern. We, we get off course. We forget. My people have a way of rectifying that. They have a calendar of 42 days. Nine times of that calendar of 42 days creates a year. On that 42 day calendar, each person is born on a particular day. I'm born on a particular Sunday. On that Sunday, 
each period, similar to a month, my job under my parents' guidance and my community's safeguarding is to go to a sacred stream or river or body of water. Wear all white. Abstain two days before from meats, if you eat meat, from intercourse, and to focus on your purpose in life in nature. And so by doing this ritual act every 42 days is an act of remembrance, of remembering, of clarifying that mission and purpose you had in life. Our folks had a, a way to structure the pattern of you remembering because it was so important that you, as you move from infancy to adolescence to young adulthood to adulthood to marriage and family and elderhood, you would have this constant reminder about what your mission and purpose was in life so you can achieve it. So you can become counted among the mature and evolved ancestors so that they would call my name when I become an ancestor when they pour libation, when they remember the kind of life that I lived. And you see, these people, along with other African people, figured out something that us modern folks have not to figure out yet, which is how to live forever. These folks figured out the way you live forever in perpetuity is never to die. And the way you'd never die is never to be forgotten. You see, these folks hold that you die when you're forgotten. And that's why they do, and I do, these rituals of remembrances to always remember, to always stay connected with forces of nature, with the ancestral forces, and with families and communities. And so, once I reach the stage of transitioning, my whole life is built up for this crucial moment to become an ancestor. That may seem strange to you, that to build your entire life up to become an ancestor? You see, the circle of life or the circuit of life can't be completed until you become an ancestor, an evolved, mature ancestor, one who have completed their mission and purpose in life. And then you join that large pool of candidates to be reborn into the lineage or family to which you were born into once you make that full circle, once you complete that full cycle, in order to become counted among the good and the matured and evolved ancestors, we need to perform the proper burial. The proper burial involves a series of rituals, some of which I won't, because I can't, detail them on YouTube. You can contact me for more information, but I'll give you the outlines of them. The proper burial starts with figuring out if in fact the person has accomplished their purpose in life or not. This is crucial because we need to know what category of ancestry or what bucket they'll fall into. Knowing which category they fall into will determine how we will regard, treat, call them or not when it comes to their participation in ongoing community and family life. Secondly, there is a funerary ritual or rites. The body is washed, the body is cleansed, the body is preserved until significant number of the family can attend the funerary ritual and rites. There is a viewing, and certainly after that viewing, the body is prepared for the burial. During this process, there are tons of ritual libation, there are other rituals and ceremonies, there is dancing, there's festivities. And one such ritual occurred pretty often where I was born in Jamaica. And of course, this ritual has an African basis and of course an African based structure and meaning. This ritual is called Nine Night. Nine Night was a ritual ceremony that occurred over nine nights. It involved celebration of the person's life. It involves rum, of beverages, food, of festivities, of dancing, of some what we call slackness, you know, a bit of ease. I mean, the, the law sort of relax a bit because death is sort of a festival. Death is not a melancholy, it's not a terminal point, it's not the end. It's really a transition point. And my people view temporal death in that way. It's really another phase or step in your full human development. And so we wanna make sure we provide you with the, the turbo boost, the hydraulics, the energy to push you on into the next phase of your development. And to do so, we got a party. 
and that party and that celebration, that festival, over nine nights, back to back to back to back, in sequential order, that nine night, we also remove your bedding, your clothing, belongings from your room, where you lived. And usually you often will burn the mattress and some of the clothes or discard them. Because we don't want the energy of you as a living being be confused with the energy of becoming an ancestral being. These two are at odds. But it's also a way to cleanse. The same way we would clear a field by burning the field in order to plant for the new harvest, we also have to cleanse the room and the area in which you inhabited as a living human being. And so there's a cleansing ritual aspect to the burning and to the discarding of those materials. And those clothing cannot be worn by any other persons. And there are other rituals that go along with it as well. These and other rituals, again, are designed to help you get to your destination. My people also imagine that journey this way. Once you have transitioned and we put you on your way, either through night-night or other corresponding rituals, then you go to a shoreline. The spirit of you, that is, goes to a shoreline. And then you wait a raftman who comes with a raft, and that raft person will take you across the waters. Across the waters is the land of the ancestors. And then the land of the ancestors is where you will find your particular place. Now, some also say that you will climb up a mountain on a golden chain. And at the top of the mountain, you will see the next land, that is the land of the ancestors, where you will join your kinfolks waiting to be recycled, reused within your particular family constellation. In either case, all of these hinge on having the proper burial. In fact, I theorize or suspect that much of the problems in our world, in the modern world, is a result of folk across this world not having the proper burial. We have incomplete lives or incomplete energies or spirits from those lives that are literally haunting us. A world that is disturbed is a world that is haunted. And a world that is haunted is a world that has people who are just incomplete in their human development. That's my theory, at least. You can put yours in the comments and then, you know, we can have a discussion. But I think that theory makes sense because we often don't take the attention or time or have the know-how to do the proper burial. Simply going to a religious place and having a ceremony and then simply putting the body in the ground is not the proper burial. They need to have that turbocharged boost, that premium fuel that gets them over the finish line to the next step. They need that baton to pass them on to the next phase. They need that community support and buoying, that hydraulics to push them on and to get them there safely and soundly where they be recognized among their other relations. The proper burial is crucial to making this process of becoming whole and fully human possible. So the next time you go to a funeral, make sure that your relatives and relations are aware that they need to make sure you have the proper burial because you want to be counted among those who are fully human and fully evolved and that you'll be the one that they will call on as a model, as a figure of support, of wisdom and counsel because you have provided them with the way to do this thing called life and do it well and we need more of that rather than less. Indeed, if the world had more proper burials, we probably would see less chaos, conflict, confusion, and violence that we do. Think about it. Until next time, I am Kwesi Kunadu. This is Powered by Ancestry.